All right, now I've added another study. I had three, but I found another great one. Kind of takes the counter uh, to it. Eating meat is it biblical? Four studies used to have three that say not so much. Comments by Bible study manuals in blue and blue font. I haven't really gone through it yet. I've just made a few comments here and there. You see if you can do the same thing I do. You should be able to do it better because most people my age aren't as smart as people your age. Maybe you're older. I'm 80. Okay, what does the Bible say about eating meat? Is it a sin? I've read that already. I haven't done any more comments on it, but you can go through it. Is it okay for Christians to eat meat? I did that. <coughs> And Christian vegetarianism, I haven't done that yet, and added the fourth one. Is it better to be a vegetarian than to eat meat? And this is more of a technical thing, it's not a biblical thing. It's just talking about what we know today, scientifically or otherwise, whether it's more healthy to eat vegetarian than to eat meat. Most people who are vegetarian are violently on the side of eating vegetables and don't kill animals to eat. Now, whether or not it's moral, or biblical, or biblical, this shows you something very, very surprising. So wait till we get to that as well and see what your comments are. Maybe I just picked a study that's slanted in one direction. It shouldn't be. You'll let me know or not. But I want to show you how what I've learned and how to decide for yourself uh, an issue, and this issue is, is it biblical to eat meat or not? Or is it a sin? Or is it okay for Christians to eat meat? Or is it a better thing to be vegetable, veg, veg, <laughs> vegetarian? Or Christian vegetarianism? There's three studies, and then the fourth one is not so much about the Bible, but about what we have discovered, and you will be surprised. I'm not a vegetarian, and I'm not exclusively a a meat eater. I combine the two. Anyway, let's go to where we left off. Is it biblical to be a vegetarian or a vegan? That was addressed in this study above. Here's the second study. Is it okay for Christians to eat meat? And this person has, has uh, done a study of this, and they have their point of view. So far, they're kind of sketchy. You provide evidence for your conclusions, not so much in this study. So it's a personal opinion, a personal experience, but that doesn't mean that their experience is good for everybody. Or maybe their uh, objective point of view is not subjective at all. It's subjective. So when looking at what the Bible says about meat, it is clear that it is not unbiblical to be a vegetarian or a vegan and a vegan. For those who feel they do not want to participate in the meat industry, do not well, do not feel well about eating meat, or feel they should give up for any reason, they are not violating any precepts and are exercising their freedom in Christ to pursue a lifestyle that works best for them. I don't like that. It reflects the concerns the Corinthians had about eating sacrificed meat. If a Christian feels too much feeling, how about evidence of what the proper Christian life should be? How about immaturity? You don't interfere with an immature Christian's life so much, unless invited, unless you have a proper uh, constructive way to present Scripture to them, not your feelings. I don't care what you feel. What does God's word say? A lot of people, they don't get a chance to read a lot of the Bible when they first become Christians. I'm still in a work in progress here. I haven't finished the whole Bible, even once properly. So I don't worry about my feelings. I want to go investigate the passage. So it reflects the concerns that Corinthians had about eating sacrificed meat. Who cares? What does the, the, the Paul's letter say to the first Corinthians? To the Corinthians. If a Christian feels they should give up meat for health or moral reasons, they have the freedom to do so. That says in Scripture. The problem is, where is your passage? Where 
is this in view in the Bible. Doesn't matter about your feelings. If you feel good about something and it's sinful, that doesn't make it right. Doesn't make you should do it. If you feel bad about something that isn't sinful, that doesn't mean you should do it or not do it. What God's word says is the issue. So anyway, I, I get so upset when people go on and on and on about their feelings. The problem is one is to pursue a lifestyle that is biblical, which includes confession of sins in order to be purified from temporal sin. What you eat has no bearing on, on that end. If you're in fellowship with God at this point in time. God doesn't say, uh, we're out of sorts with you because you ate uh, uh, barbecue turkey last night. No, but we're out of sorts with you because you imposed that point of view on somebody that was immature. And let them grow in their own way. And you can meet every, you can, I can meet Christians all day and lecture them on how I think they should behave because they're going to fall short of something. But, you know, <laughs> That's not my business. And I'm not the perfect Christian. I am perfectly in fellowship with God. When? When I've confessed my sins. Isn't that interesting? You admit your wrongdoing up to this point. You have no right doing any, any time in your Christian life in the mortal body at any second. You don't have no, you have no perfect right doing, righteous doing. So it, confess the sins that are aware that the Holy Spirit makes you aware of. If we confess is literally, if we admit the same thing the Holy Spirit has admitted to us, then you confess the sins, and it, it's made right with God by His grace. He makes it right and purifies you from those sins you confess, as well as all unrighteousness. Had it anything, anything to do with feeling here? No. Does that have anything to do with right doing? No. You confess your wrongdoing. Get over yourself. Ultimately, diet is an individual choice made based on health needs and personal taste. You know what? Practically speaking, this is not so. See, the thinking is wrong. You, you think outside the box to something that's logical. Not always true. Choices may be, may not be based on actual health needs. How many people are so in tune with their bodies, they know everything that they should eat? How many are so in tune with their bodies? They buy stuff on the grocery shelf that has flaws in the label. Personal taste may well be detrimental or beneficial. I'm too low in this chair. I can't type to one's body. We don't always know. So I don't know. Ultimately, diet is an individual choice. Not always true. Matter of fact, it shouldn't be. You may choose to do something else in a sense, desire to do something else, but your doctor says don't eat that. My doctor said, stop eating so much ice cream. Well, actually, I have an A1C that's perfect. I can eat all the ice cream I want, I think. But you know what? I don't think that's a wise choice. So I've stopped choosing to do that. Instead, I eat a protein drink with not any fat in it. It's got a vitamins. It's got protein. And uh, that's a lot better. And it tastes good. It's got a little sugar and perhaps too much. But it substitutes for eating half a gallon of ice cream every day. Good, good choice? Yes. I made that my choice. I was not, 
but I chose to eat the ice cream before that, and it wasn't based on health needs. It was just about a taste. And I bought a big, huge thing of ice cream to save money. It cost a dollar ninety nine. It's like a quart and a half, and I ate all of it a lot of the time. Not good. I just couldn't stop. So I had to say, okay, that's my personal taste. I'm going to go against it. The healthy thing was to go against my uh, personal taste and go for my health needs as I was educated about them, re-educated. I thought the health, the ice cream, the lot, I don't want to lose a lot of weight. I tend to lose a lot of weight because I exercise. So I ate ice cream to beef up and my weight was great. And my body was great. It didn't show any effort. But sooner or later, I know there's going to be a problem with that because of all the cholesterol I'm scarfing up and all the sugar and all the fat, the un the uh, unsaturated fats. See, so you can't start, start making questions. Ultimately, no, not so. Diet is an individual choice. Shouldn't be always so. You should sometimes eat things that you don't choose to eat because you know they're healthy. Then you make the re-choice. And, and it's made based, ultimately, it's made based on health needs? No. A lot of things you eat aren't based on health needs. And personal taste? See, don't say stuff like that. Food exists first for nourishment and secondarily to provide a pleasurable experience. Okay, what, what's your point? Food is tasty but can be a stumbling block for some people. Now you're making a point. Whether it is meat, alcohol, or sugar, there is freedom in Christ to consume it. But it should never become an idol or a stumbling block for others. You know, where is Scripture here? Uh, you know, it's, you're, you're, you're preaching... Without scripture. I, I don't like these one sentence preaching. Without scriptural. R-I-P-T-U-R-A-L references are hazardous. Because you, you don't know where you got in Scripture, what God's saying, what is the context? All right, we have Christian vegetarianism. This is the next study we're doing. Christian vegetarianism is the practice of keeping to a vegetarian lifestyle for reasons connected to or derived from the Christian faith. Again, you may think that what you're doing is derived from the Christian faith. And the answer is, again, what you're thinking is not as relevant as what the scriptures say. Don't start preaching what you're not always so. Uh, which passage do you have have in view? You may be reading in the Old Testament too long and you think i got to keep the Mosaic Law. But the problem is that's not derived from the Christian faith. Some people think you just have to have the dietary laws of the Law of Moses brought forward. That's not the Christian faith. The Christian faith says, Christian, not Jewish, talks about eat whatever you want to eat. Don't let, don't interfere with the, the spiritual growth of your, your brother in Christ. And you derive something from the Christian faith. What is derived from the Christian faith? What does derive? I don't like this. From It starts off bad. The Christian faith. You know why I know this is questionable? Why don't, didn't, didn't you word it derived from Scripture? Not from the Christian faith. 